Hi, and welcome to Dave Hill's Guitar Bible. Thank you for tuning in, and thank you for enjoying the lessons. We're going to continue on in this lesson, uh, learning some more uh, skills and uh, ways to use arpeggios, as well as learn some more technique exercises and put it all together in some fun ways. Okay, so uh, you'll notice now I'm playing my trusted Les, Les Paul Deluxe. This is a 76 Les Paul Deluxe. Um, I use this one uh, not as often as some of my other guitars, but this one has a particular sound that uh, I really enjoy for certain kinds of playing, especially for bluesy kind of stuff. It sounds really great for, for me. So anyway, let's do a little warm up on a pentatonic sequence, okay? Um, I'm going to show you something that maybe uh, you've practiced before, but we'll put a little different spin on it too, okay? And it's going to be a sequence, a group of four, okay? So a group of four of any kind of scale is simply four notes up the scale before it ascends from the next degree of the scale. So a group of four in a pentatonic would be this. And then the next four notes, starting from the next note of the scale, would be. And so on. Okay, so that's called a group of four. We've done that with major scales, too. All right, so that's a familiar sequence for you now. Okay, so if we did it in a pentatonic scale, without stopping, it would be like this. Like this. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a... Okay, let's do it slower though so you can follow along. Three, four. Go back to double time again. Three, four. Now, reversing that would be the opposite. Three, four. Okay, now, of course, you want to do that in different positions of the pentatonic, right? So you would do it down, let's say down here, like this. Right, or you would do it right here. Oops, I added a note in there, okay? The point is, it's just a sequence it's four notes of a pentatonic scale, and you can play it in any of your five positions, okay? Now, you should also try to do other kinds of sequences, too. Those are good uh, because they have a very symmetrical and even kind of sound, but sometimes what you want to do is something that's not a perfectly uh, fitting number in, in a groove, like, like four against four, right? Sometimes you want to do three against four or five against four, meaning four beats, okay? So maybe five, we, we could do a group of five. We could go... One, two, three, four, five, and then start on the next degree of the scale. And then. So that kind of is an offset pattern because it turns the beat around when you're doing that. If you go. Kind of an unusual feeling when you're playing that to play five against one e and a two e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one it, it turns around so it's kind of it's kind of a challenging way to practice so let's do that slow one two and three and four and Finish it up a little higher. Okay, now I don't know if we can play that up to speed there. Let's try it. Two, three, 
and a four E and a. I think I doubled one note in there. Let me try it again. Two, three. That again, let me try that again. What I'm what I'm getting at is, is I go up the sequence. You got to make sure you keep ascending and not repeating one of the starting points. So that's what I did twice already. Okay, now, I did it right that time, but I want to show you what I did at the top that was kind of interesting. Okay, as I got up to the top, I ran out of strings, obviously. And there's my last five notes I can really play with in this position. Okay, does that mean I should stop? Well, I could, but I could just continue the sequence by going like this. Just go to the next note in the sequence in the pattern on that same string, which would go up to here, and then play fi the five notes in pentatonic right here. So I've got, and as long as I go to the next note, the scale pattern, uh, the pentatonic scale, and then continue to play five more notes. I'm sorry, I'll be okay. I'll keep playing a pentatonic scale. Uh, in the right sequence. So you can extend the sequence even uh, on the top two strings as long as you're playing it correctly as you change through each pattern. Okay? It's a little, little more difficult, but it's kind of fun to practice that. So let's do it slowly from the A right here. Here we go. I didn't quite do that right. Let me just start on the last two strings. So that's, that's a, a fun sequence and it's challenging because it doesn't feel uh, any, like an even straight sequence like a lot of the ones we've played. So that's a group of five. So remember that for the next week's practice. And you can of course do that with any scale. You can do that with a major scale. continue it on like that. So don't, don't always do the obvious one. Sometimes uneven uh, groupings like that make for some interesting uh, combinations. Okay, so let's continue on now. Um, you'll see on my board over here, I've uh, added some other arpeggios and rearranged a few of them in some different keys to show you some of the things we're going to play over my progression I've got here. Um, Okay, we're back. And you can see over here what I've done is I've rearranged some of these arpeggios in some different keys, added a few, put a few uh, fret markers in different places to show you the arpeggios that we're going to be using for our next uh, series of workout chords. Okay, now you'll notice that I do this a lot in these lessons. And I think it's really important to practice the things that I'm showing you, the arpeggios and the scales that we've been working on for a while over chord progressions. It's, it's a thing that's really important with learning how to play an instrument because if you just spend time doing this kind of practice, you know. Right? 
doesn't really get you anywhere. It, it gets you used to playing the notes of the arpeggio in order uh, in time, which is by itself is okay, but that doesn't necessarily mean uh, and doesn't necessarily translate into making music with them. Okay, so how, how do you get better at making music? Well, you have to play over things that sound musical. And a chord progression in time, something that sounds like a song or a familiar kind of chord sequence, something that you might play in, in the future in another kind of situation, maybe in a band, if you practice things like that, they, they are immediately more practical. Right, they're practical because you're going to come across them in, in real life situations. Okay, so in the in the key of A minor, there's a lot of chords that commonly are connected together. A minor often wants to go to F major. Right, so I've written that on my second chord. It sounds really nice to do that. There's this typical relationship of those chords. Okay, now I like to always throw something in in a progression that makes you kind of have to stay focused on where you're at so that it, it sticks out a little bit. And that's what the D major seven is doing in there. D major seven typically would not be in an A minor progression, right? It's in there because it's kind of giving you a little bit of a, a, a contrast, right? That's, those chords fit very well together. And then you hear this, it sounds good, but it's just a, l a little outside the key, okay? So that's gonna give you an opportunity to grab these arpeggios right here that I've written out. You could play, obviously this could be in B, uh, D major as well, and that would be with your finger on the 10th fret. Okay, and then I go back to A minor, uh, rather F major, just to mix it up a little differently. And then that sounds nice, going to B flat major seven, so I've written that one out as well as the F major seven. Okay, and those are right on, right perfectly suited on top of each other. And then B flat major seven. And then finally we have a dominant chord. We haven't used one of those in a while. And that takes us back to the A minor really nicely on the end, okay? And so I've only given you one shape of those, but I know that you've worked on some other ones as well. Okay, so let's see. Now, do I want you to go like this? Well, it's okay when you're first playing. At least you're playing them over a chord progression, okay? But of course, we're going to do some more with that. But let's just see if we can keep up with the progression playing in eighth notes without breaking the flow of the music. OK, and then we'll talk about other, other things to do. Uh, let me do this for a minute here. I'm going to give myself a little count in here so I can start playing with you. Here we go. Up and down it twice. Now A for major seven. A minor. Here comes D major. F major seven. That major seven. E7. Back to A minor. Okay. Now, I didn't really give you much of a warning there, but I was playing in steady. 16th notes, in other words, four beats, four, uh, four notes per, per beat. One E and a two E and a three. Now, for someone at home, maybe that's too fast. Maybe you need to go back to just straight eighth notes. Maybe you need to be like this. That would be totally acceptable if you had to do this. Maybe like this. That's okay. At least you're keeping up. You're keeping your spot. All 
right? That's okay. You can you can go back and forth between playing eighth notes or sixteen notes. On you know you can, maybe you you feel comfortable on certain ones playing sixteenth notes, and other ones you want to slow down. But just keep it in time. See if you can keep it really accurately in time. Okay. Now um, you could also do this. Just just integrate something that we just played a minute ago. Check this out. Remember when we did our sequence? Listen to how good that sequence of five is going to sound against this progression now. So I kind of put some different things in there on that on that particular one, but the, the fives were kind of cool, right? At the beginning, right? So try to try to think about that. Maybe go back to the groups of four too at the beginning. All of that can be added in there, but um, what you want to try to do now is start to make it more uh, musically. Uh, inventive now and creative with all these different devices okay so you want to go back and forth between different subdivisions go back and forth between playing real straight in time real perfectly metrically in time and then also floating over the time but always knowing where the time is and then of course using motifs and phrases to make it uh, musical and spontaneous you don't want it to sound like you're you're a machine okay so let's let's put it a little bit together at the end and I'll just kind of play some ideas for you at the end and think about some of the things we've talked about and listen for them in my playing. Okay.
Okay, so arpeggios, sequences, all that was put together in that example and kind of putting it all, all over the range of the neck. Okay, so you know, these progressions are really meant for you to practice. So when you get back uh, in your own practice routine, put them on a sequencer and put them on some kind of situation, maybe in a different tempo or a different groove that you like, but use these with some of the devices I'm giving you to uh, find your own ways of creating your own music. All right, I'll talk to you in the next lesson. Thank you again for tuning in, and I'll talk to you soon.